Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the sound system demo on the 2024 Mazda CX-90 and its 12-speaker Bose audio system. This is going to be an in-depth review. We're going to take a look at how the infotainment system works, take a look at audio inputs, adjustments, controls, speaker locations, then we're going to head out on the road and listen to these sample tracks while we're rolling, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Now, if you don't care about any of that stuff at the beginning and you just want to hear the music, click ahead in the video. We've got chapters to get you right to the tunes. And I recommend listening with headphones so you can hear exactly what I hear in the driver's seat. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. This is the top tier of Mazda's new flagship model, the CX-90. Still a three-row crossover, but sporting some new Mazda styling here. And quite nice to drive, quite nice inside and out. A lot of things to like about this car. Definitely more pricey than we've seen from a lot of other Mazdas. And as you can see, this one is hooked up to a trailer. So this isn't the one we'll be driving a little bit later, but it's gonna have the same sound system. So if you do wanna see more on it, check the link in the description. Got a little DM first review. Now we always do these tests with lossless, uncompressed wave files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system and high quality Roland binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We also do the test with the sound settings set to their factory default. So let's take a look at those now. Mazda's still sticking with the rotary knob control screen. Now, if you are using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can actually use this as a touch screen. But when you're in the normal Mazda screens, it's rotary only, pretty far away. Is it my favorite infotainment system? No, but it's also not my least favorite either. There are quite a few things I like about Mazda's uh, rotary knob display. And I, I, once you get used to it, it is a pretty nice system to use. But either way, we're in the media screen now, and I don't know how well this is gonna come up on my second GoPro. The lighting is not super ideal in here. But let's go down to audio settings, and you've got adjustments for bass and treble. Let's go through those. Below that, you've got adjustment for front, rear, and left and right fader and balance. And then Bose center point down here. Now, this is Mazda and Bose's sort of surround experience. It's gonna create a little bit more of a 3D sound effect, a little bit more uh, enveloping, if you will. Let's turn it on and off before the song ends. And you have one, two, and three levels that you can adjust how dramatic the center point experience is. When you have it off, you have two modes above that, Bose stereo mode, standard, and linear. Now linear is going to give you the most true to a stereo recording as possible. It's gonna focus the music a little more front of you, almost like there were a sound bar up there. And standard is gonna give you a little bit more of that surround, uh, just in the car, like coming out of more of the speaker's experience. As this next song picks up, we'll go between both of those. And then Bose Audio Pilot uh, compensates for road and wind noise and everything like that as you get going faster. Up here, you've also got listening position when center point is off. You can focus it on just the driver's seat or all seats. Now, if you're the only one driving your car around regularly, I recommend using driver's seat. It's actually going to change the timing of the speakers in order to make it seem like you're directly placed in between two stereo speakers right here from the driver's seat. But now that this is picking up, let's go down and go through the Bose stereo modes. Pretty subtle differences there. I am a bit surprised that they give you that, adjustments for those sort of things, but don't give you any sort of mid-range or even better, a five or nine band equalizer. So that is it for audio adjustments. For audio controls in the new CX-90, you've got a volume knob here. It's in good proximity to the rotary knob. Nice clicks. Works pretty well. I like that. You've also got a volume rocker on the left side of the wheel. For track selection, this is pretty nifty. You can just rotate, or not rotate, but scoot the volume knob back or forth, right or left, to go to different tracks. And then on the left side of the wheel, right next to volume, you've got a track rocker. I quite, quite like that. And then, technically speaking, you could use the rotary knob here and actually go back and forth using the screen. For audio inputs in the CX-90, you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM, satellite radio, 
Pandora streaming built in, Bluetooth, support for wired and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, two USB-C ports for data, and that is it. What does that mean you're missing? Well, there's no USB-A ports, so make sure you got an adapter like this. There's also no 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack, not the end of the world on that one, and no other sort of streaming services. Now, maybe they could add something like Spotify or Apple Music or Amazon Music, but for now, all we're seeing is Spotify. Speaker locations, as I said, this is a 12 speaker system. Starting in the bottom left, you've got a mid-ranger here, one, tweeter there, two, way up into the firewall there, you've got three, a woofer, four in the center, five, six, seven on the other side. Coming into the second row, six, seven mid-rangers, and then eight, nine, am I low? No, I'm definitely low, sorry, seven. Eight, nine right here, and then 10, 11 mid-rangers in the D pillars there. And then, I actually don't know if I can safely open the hatch on this one, but there's a subwoofer under the floor there making 12. All right, well, I'm gonna get this stuff put away. We're gonna get in a proper car without a trailer on the back and get out on the road.
satisfied with the balancing of the system. There were a few elements in that fourth track there, the Traveling Symphony, that I didn't love how much sound was coming through the mid-rangers right here, added to a, a hollowness in the system that you won't really be able to tune out because there's no mid-range adjustment there. You've only got your bass and your treble. I, I don't know why that tuning seems a little bit different than it is in other Mazdas. But this track, it doesn't seem to be bothering me too much. Sometimes we'll listen to cars like the Harman Kardon systems and the BMWs, and the snare drum hits and the guitar come through way too harsh with the flat EQ and, and borderline hurt your ears. I'm not getting that in this car. And because of those woofers down in the firewall, I am getting a decent amount of that driving experience. What I'm most curious about here is when we switch to this next track and turn up the bass, how much are we going to get from that rear mounted subwoofer and how much are we going to get from the woofers in front of us? thoughts on the 12 speaker Bose system here in the Mazda CX-90. Now I don't love testing a system without being at highway speeds. We have been listening to this system a good amount throughout the day so I can kind of weigh in on my impressions. I just don't love showing it off here at these slower speeds. This Ford truck doesn't seem too concerned with getting anywhere too quickly. All that to say, 
they did intentionally tune the system with more bass and more treble than what you typically get out of a, a, an expertly tuned system. That being said, a lot of people like to turn up the treble and turn up the bass. They like more. They like artificially bumping up their tracks. It's it's like it's like the makeup of sound systems. You're you're enhancing it. It's not exactly how most true musicians would want their music to sound, but for most of you, you th you're gonna think it's gonna sound pretty good, and if you don't like that, you can dial it down a little bit. So admittedly, I'd probably dial down bass and treble one click each or so for myself. But all in, I'm actually pretty pretty darn satisfied with the tuning in the system and the, and the power and the balance. It's, I would say, maybe not quite as impressive as every Mazda system out there, but it's better than what we heard in the CX-50, and it's getting an A. Definitely a solid A system. I can't necessarily vouch for what it's gonna sound like in the back of the car, because there aren't nearly as many speakers back there. But overall, pretty happy with the system, and not too much of a surprise. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do wanna see more on the CX-90, check the link in the description for our first drive, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.